My name is Cedric Jackson. I'm a nurse practitioner student, and today I will be performing a cardio and peripheral vascular exam. This is my patient. I'll have a state of first and last name for me. Tori Jackson. And your date of birth? 5-15-88. And your um, race? African American. And what gender do you prefer? Female. Okay. So first, what I would do is I would uh, <clears throat> check the patient's blood pressure while she's in supine and also in sitting position in both arms, and then I will compare the two. After that, I will check for uh, jugular venous pressure, and I will do this by having the patient lie down between 30, 30 to 45 degrees, and, um, and then I will measure from there. Okay, so let's... Would you lie back for me? All right. Perfect. I will have, um, let me fix the camera here. I will have the patient lie again in a, uh, in a comfortable position at 30 to 45 degrees. Have her face the, uh, the, the turn to her left here, like she's doing here. I will look for Try to locate the external juggler. And after I locate the external juggler, I will look for pulsation from the internal juggler. And if you have trouble doing that, you can use a little ambient light to help you find it. And I see it here. I will also note her external notch, which is here. I will take the straight edge and go out vertically horizontally action from that area. <clears throat> then I will use a ruler measuring from um, the distance between the sternal notch and my straight edge. And that measurement is 1.5. So her um, J, uh, JVP would be um, 1.5 and you will want it to be less than three for to be normal next i will have a uh, sit up for me and i would uh then assess her um uh, assess her neck by palpating her carotids uh i would not palpate up high i would palpate down low and also i would palpate one at a time feeling for any upstroke also, the amplitude of the uh, carotids. Next, I will go into chest inspection. In the clinical situation, her shirt will be removed. So, um, but here I'm just gonna, I will check her chest, the chest wall for any deformities. Um, <clears throat> also, done any uh, pericardial uh, pulsation or any apical pulsa pulsation. I will then palpate uh, around the um, palpator heart or chest wall around her heart going down to the second intercostal space and I will palpate in the aortic region also in the pulmonic region and since she is a female you have to uh, move uh, breast tissue to find other areas. So next is the um, <clears throat> mitral area. And then the tricuspid area here. I well, did also palpate for uh, PMI, which is uh, the point of maximal impulse. You would find that uh, mid-convicular line near the fifth in the costal space. And if you aren't able to feel it that way, you can have the patient lie on her, um, lie on her back on her uh, left side, and then feel palpated that way. But we we did pal I was able to to palpate it. Uh, I will now go into uh, have the patient lie back so I can palpate her uh, uh, the uh, her aorta 
in the abdominal region here, feeling for any type of pulsations. Okay. And I'm not feeling anything abnormal. Oh, next, uh, next thing we'll go into auscultation. Uh, I will auscultate again, finally going down into the second intercostal space and start uh, auscultating, again in the aortic region. Now in the pulmonic region. Listen for S1 and S2, any murmurs, any extra sounds. Going down to Earth's point, which can be found between the third and fourth intercostal space. Uh, PMI, which again can be found in the fifth intercostal space near the, in the mid curricular line. I'll also tell you in the <clears throat> tricuspid space, tricuspid region, I'm sorry. So uh, listen to auscultate the uh, a order. I will listen to all these regions with both my bell and diaphragm, and I'm going to go back and auscultate her carotid again with both the bell and a diaphragm. Listen for any bruise. And again, I'm auscultating um, the heart. I said I will listen for S1 and S2. I will also be listening for any extra sounds like the splitting of S2. This occurs um, due to the pulmonic and aortic valve closing, being out of sync and closing. Um, at different times. This is better heard on inspiration. And I'm not hearing any extra sounds. Alright. I would, um, then, um, while she's here, lying in the lying position, I'm going to go ahead and auscultate, um, the femoral arteries. And again, in a clinical situation, you may have to have the, the patient uh, lower their, her pants. Again, I will listen with both the bell and diaphragm. This is for any bruise. I will next, I will have you sit up for me. Then we're going to the peripheral vascular part of the assessment. 
where I will first inspect, inspect both her, her upper and lower extremity, looking for any skin discoloration, any edema. Yeah, just looking, not palpating just yet. So then I would go into palpating her pulses. First, I would start with palpating her radial pulse. Still strong. I'm ready to make plus two. Next, her brachial pulses. Still strong, non binding. I'll rate them a plus two as well. Next, I would uh, 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 palpate her um, post tibial. Not post. A popliteal pulses. Okay. Any non bounding. Maybe plus two. And her bilateral popliteal pulses. Next, I would go into um, where I would um, <clears throat> palpate her dorsalis pedis pulses. And then plus two again, and non bounding. Her post tibial pulses. Plus two is so again there non bounding. Then I would check for cap refill in both her finger and, and her toes. But I'll also look for any clubbing, cyanosis, um, any uh, splinter hemorrhages or tar stains from smoking. And being that my patient here has on uh, nails, it's hard to uh, will be hard to again check cap refills. But again, in a real clinical situation, hope that our patient doesn't have nail polish on to able to check cap refill. And you want them to blanch and turn pink again right away when you get good circulation. Again, I would do it. Also, her toes, checking cap refill. So that will conclude my uh, cardio and peripheral vascular um, assessment. Do you have any questions? No questions. Okay. Thank you.